Hey guys, it's Katie. So, earlier today, I made two pendants. And one of them hit the floor in a second, and my dog got it. So, there it is. Well, the one that hit the floor. This was just a trial thing. So, I'm going to remake one. And I'm going to do from, because I had never tried that before. From what I learned from that, I'm going to remake the video. And hopefully, I'll come out with something better. So first things first, I have a piece here of white Primo clay um, rolled out on my thickest setting. And I just kind of smooshed it to my tile because I'm going to leave it here for baking. So hopefully I get no air bubbles and stuff back there. And this is, you know, if you have a um, like excess white that has a bunch of hairs or scraps in it, this is probably really good for that actually. Because we're going to cover it with inks in a second. So... I don't, I rarely use pure white because I have so much dog hair and fluffies and stuff in this basement. I'm in an unfinished basement, so, you know, it's just pretty much, like, honestly, like, hang on, watch, let me show you. It's concrete walls, concrete floor, you know, open rafters, so it's totally unfinished, and it's, yes, those are my cigarettes, I do smoke, I know, I know. Um, and my desk is a mess right now. Um, so I get a lot of little fuzzies and stuff. Anyways, what I'm going to do with this one. So on this other one that I did, I tried to keep green on one side and red on the other or pink on the other. Now to define an edge a little more, what I'm going to do is just take a needle tool or a ball tool or something very fine. And I'm going to impress just a fine line. Maybe I'm a little left than half of this. I don't want it to be super noticeable, but I am going to put it in there. And hopefully, if any, they'll go into there rather than bleed. But they may bleed too. Let me smooth it off a little bit. I don't want it super noticeable at the end. The next thing I'm going to do different is I'm going to put a layer of a color, I think. Maybe not. Let me just put some color on here. I have some Q-tips close by. 99% um, alcohol, which you do, oh, no, that wasn't the one I wanted to use. Um, you do want to be careful how much of the 99% alcohol you use because it will dry out the top layer of your clay. So I think I do want to keep this quite bright. This is the Pinata Pink, and it's, it's a really bright pink. So I'm going to cover a lot of this with this because I do want a good amount of this. If I was a little carefuler there, I wouldn't have gotten it down in, but I did. Spread it maybe a little bit. I should put some gloves on so I can use my fingers. And then, I don't know, let's see what other colors do we got going on here. Mm -hmm. Just looking through my box of, let's do some of the pinata magenta, the senorita magenta. Now they will bleed if it's still wet, so you'll get more bleeding than if it's dry, which is fine. Fan it out a little bit. And then <laughs> just actually set this on a piece of paper towel. Um, oh, these are little, I said it in the other video that I made and just deleted. Um, cleaning foam swabs. They're just little, I got them on Amazon. Um, they're small little swabs. I also think I might want to use, I just bought, not just, but from Ranger, they have their pearl alcohol. And so I might use this at the end, actually. I'm thinking I'll do it like I did last time. Um, let's see, what else do I want to throw in there? I don't want a dark color to mask that. But I do want to throw in something different. Maybe we go with like a yellow Let me see. Oh, my yellows. Ah, dandelion. 
Maybe we'll get some light orange out of it. Let me get this. I don't want to blend it if I can help it, but. If it does, it's okay. Like in here, it's okay. Let it kind of mix. Maybe even, let's see the, this picture, oh crap, in the yellow. There, I got it off fast enough. I didn't want it to go into the yellow, oops. And I just got some on my clay. Oh, that was from earlier. Let me try to put that on, but a little more control if I can help it. This is just the pinata pink that I'm just dipping over that dark color. Did I just use the raspberry? No, I used the, let's use the raspberry, ranger raspberry. And then on the other side, instead of super green, I wanted to go more bluey. I thought I had some green still. So I used some of the um, citrus. And I got a green one of those. And another Q-tip I need to grab to be ready.
And I've only done this once and I wasn't super thrilled with the results. So I thought I needed to kind of modify it a little bit. Let's take some of the Ranger Aqua. Let's see what that looks like with it. Kind of tilting it. I, well, that with pink wouldn't look bad, that aqua. I'd probably turn it more purple, but I don't want it to turn my whole pink side purple. Oh, it's okay. Let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. Don't get too discouraged. If oh, sorry guys, I wasn't even on camera. If the weird things happen, like I tapped it with the paper towel and I got some pink on it, let things happen. Especially when you're doing like something like this with alcohol inks, you may actually come out with something you're happier with. You know, you just kind of have to let things go. Now let's use some pinata teal. I think this is one of their new colors. I think I might even want a little of that kind of down in here. The whole fun about alcohol inks is, you know, when you're, it's just kind of watching the magic happen as well. Let's, um, since I got it fully coated, let's next take some alcohol. Let's see what that does. Tiny dot right there. Splatters. Let's watch some blooms happen. Oops. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to set out an actual design. This I did not do earlier, so I'm going to kind of plan a little bit more of what I'm going to do. And I hope it helps. It may not help. So I'm going to use these blooms, and I'm going to kind of mark out where I want like a flower. So I think I'm going to do, and you may not be able to see this very well, but you will in a minute. Something like this. You know, if this is the center. I'm doing small marks because I want to, I'm going to be doing something in a second. So I don't want it to be visible if I don't actually get it perfect. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just trying to look at the ink and let it tell me what to do. I feel like I want to kind of dot something in here. Something like that. Just making light, tiny little tick marks in the clay for now. Very kind of abstractish. That's even a word, right? <clears throat> Earlier, I didn't give myself a guide, and I'm not very good at, like, when I draw flowers, like, I actually need to do it in pencil because I tend to erase a lot. Like, people who freehand petals, I'm too OCD, and when I have ones that are a lot bigger than others, it kind of bugs me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got the one on the corner. We got that one on the top. I feel like I want something kind of maybe... Over here, I was planning on doing that in my head. You don't know yet, but I'll tell you. When we get there, I feel like I need to get some rid of some of this, so. Let's do something like that. my blade. Okay. Maybe something around here. Another one kind of here. Very lightly. Sorry, it's hard having you zoomed in enough to where you can see what I'm talking about, but then not enough where if I move it so I can see around the camera that I stay on camera. See, and then that petal will be freaking huge. I hate that. Make that one a little bigger. Make this one a little bigger. Okay, and then maybe here, let's do if I can pull it off a little sideways one. Good enough. Okay. So what we're going to use to make these lines is um, a stamp carver or a linoleum carver. This is a speedball one. You just open this top part up and slide your blade in. And it, I have the smallest blade that comes in this set and it kind of goes in the handle here. And there's big, big ones, but this is the smallest one. So what I'm attempting to do is to carve out these lines. And it's going to be very rustic. This isn't going to be perfect type thing. So let's see. I'm going to use short, jaggedy strokes. Now, you don't need to, but that's what I'm doing. I didn't earlier, but I wanted to change kind of how all this looks. And it doesn't need to be perfect. And 
We're going to kind of fix things later. I wonder if I can actually, because this was actually cutting through. Will this gouge out enough for me? Actually, that might even work. Just my ball tool. Yeah, see, no, it doesn't really cut it, though. That's a problem. Now, I'm just impressing the thought of a flower. It's not going to be, like, a perfect you know, type thing. I don't want it to be either. We can just make canes if we want that, right? This is going to be a different look than that. And later, we're also going to modify what we're doing. Just wiping it off in a paper towel that I have in my hand. that in very tightly. They're really weird to get down in there like you like don't really know where the hell to put it down in there. So we're just kind of cutting shapes out. And you don't need to do flowers. You can honestly probably do whatever shape you want to do. But it does take practice. Same with cutting a, even cutting a stamp that you make with these or linoleum. They're stamp and linoleum cutters. But stamps don't squish. This squishes. So if you push in too hard, it will, you know, change. So... I do want to gouge out and make the lines are going to be impressed, but in a different type of way than a stamp, you know, using a texture stamp or using a core roller, you know, I, I just wanted a slightly different look and I was wondering if I can get that with the center. You know, when you're doing a stamp, you would actually rotate your piece put to do a circle. You would just rotate your piece, but that doesn't work very well in clay. I tried it earlier, so I'm just going to do a center like with little small strokes seems to work best. But the more you play with it, the more you may find ways to do things. I mean, I did one quick pendant and then one quick one again. So I've done two. And the second one, that brown one I showed you, I just literally put marks in it. So it wasn't like anything fancy. So I'm just kind of playing. And then this one, let's kind of, same kind of thing. So I should really stop recording right now because that's what makes the videos long. Is having you watch me do every single, single thing that I could just do off camera, but you've already seen me do it. Let me just do this one. Half the time it's because I don't want to stop and pause. <laughs> Like I'm in the midst of doing something right now. I don't want to have to hit pause to put everything down and get this one done. So, you know, earlier I did not set up a pattern, but you could do mandalas with this. You know, you could probably do whatever you want with this. 
Now I wish I had a better way to hold this down in here because it doesn't fit in between the thing. So I gotta put it. If you've had, any of you have ever used these, you gotta kind of like put it down in this thing just right. And if you get it too far, then it's a pain in the ass to pull out. But it's a blade, so if you pull on it too hard, you can cut yourself. So it's a little like V notched blade. Uh, not that I can even get it to focus. See, it's like a little V. I dropped it on, oh, I didn't really notice I dropped it on the floor. I set something on my thing and I knew I had mo slid it and then I heard crunch and my, it was in my little bluey's mouth. Jax's mouth, little jerk. It's because I had food and I was going to eat and I think he thought it was food that hit the floor. So I got it out of his mouth, but it didn't go very well for the pendant. You got one bite in it, crunch, boom, gone. I was like, damn it. Not that I was thrilled with it. It's not like this is relaxing. It's not like this is like hard to do. We got about a foot of snow today, so it's not like I was doing anything else. We didn't even go to work today. We canceled all our patients because I went to go out this morning and we literally had a foot of, or we had like a quarter of inch of ice. And then the snow started almost immediately after that. And we got like a foot of snow within like three hours. And last I looked when it was still daylight, it was still coming down. Okay, so that's what I got so far. I'm going to do those other two maybe. And then I'll come back and show you the next thing I want to do. Now, after making these two, I realized, oh, my cutter is a skinny cutter. And it's only going to go about there, which is fine. So I did another one there instead of over on the side. Okay, this is going to be more abstract. It's not going to be a perfect, because we can just make canes if we want it to be perfect. Actually, is this a good length? Or do I have to use a different cutter? This might be a little short on length. Just a hair, though. Okay, so that's what I got my for my flowers. I mean, I totally could just cut that side, but I don't want to. I want some of the green. For the green, I think I'm just going to do, like, diagonal lines, honestly. And I might use a thicker one. I just started holding it in my hand. might use one of these bigger ones. And just maybe some straight lines, or do I want to do diagonal Maybe just some straight ones. So let me actually impress where I'm going to cut. So I can actually see what's actually straight from the top. This might be easier with it in the holder. So, you know, when I was doing these leaves, that's, you know, I've only done this for like five minutes total. So, you know, the leaves, I got nice straighter lines and was able to figure out the depth and I was just kind of playing more, you know. And actually, I might want to turn this one into a bow leaf. Since all these other leaves are going to be cut off a little bit, that's a fat leaf, but that's okay. So straight lines on the blue side. So let's go from the top. I don't want it right on the edge if I can help it. Ooh, we might get some cool pulling. Actually, I should keep this clay because when you mix this clay up, you get colors. That's what I did earlier. So. I try to keep them evenly spaced, but it's not the end of the world if they're not. 
or I'm not going to let it be the end of the world if they're not. And see these ones because I think the cutter is going to cut those off. Okay, so let's cut this out and then we're done with the this part of it. And then what we'll do is let me mix this pink and stuff in with that, and I'll mix this green and blue in with that because it's still clay, it's just got alcohol ink in it. Let's cut this out. And I'll show you what we'll do after to refine it a little bit. After it's done baking, we'll refine it. And again, keep this. This will go in a, the pink color. And I'll mix it up and this will go in that blue green color and I'll mix it up and uh, and from this brown one this is what I got so I'm gonna put that in the oven I'm only gonna bake it for 30 minutes because I do think I am gonna do a border on it again just because I think it made it pop and then um, so it only needs a half hour just to firm it up so I don't mess with it We'll do the border and I will be back when it's baked. Let me just wipe off some of this ink, tint this white clay a little more if I can. And good. Okay. So it's definitely a different look for sure. And we're going to play with it a little bit more after it's baked. And actually, maybe even before it's baked because I can see where my. Because once it ba it bakes, you're not going to be able to, one, wipe any clay off or any ink off. You're not going to be able to do much because the ink does bake pretty firmly. Try to modify anything with the coloring, unless you're going to add coloring, do it before it bakes. Because you can add coloring after, you just can't take away coloring after very well. So... Try to spread this out a little bit with some alcohol. But I think I need way more alcohol than that. But I don't want to get it down in the lines if I can help it. Maybe a little bit there because you can't see that. turn into an ugly yellow. I almost want to add some maybe a little darker purplish color in or darker red. I'm not a big fan of purple. Like a, not a red, but um, like a darker pink. A bit more of this pinata magenta one. It's a pretty dark pink. Not going to even get any on it. I like to close my bottle right back up because I don't want to spill it or have it dry up, but.
try something here. Where did I put the yellow? That's not that. That's sunshine yellow. That's golden yellow. Um, hang on, I want to find the yellow and see if I can. That's green. Oh no, that's not it. That would work. Is this it? The sunshine yellow? No. Dandy. It's, I think it's dandelion. The sunshine yellow is pretty golden. That has pink on it, so I'm going to get another one of these swabs. And I tend to keep these swabs in my alcohol ink box, like other things like this, because you can reuse them with the same tonish. So I'll keep the pink ones and the green one. Yeah, I wanted to see if I could wipe some of this. Blend it out a little bit. I hate purple, but I think I need purple. I think I need a darker color. So, I guess let's let's try this amethyst. I haven't tried in the Ranger. Let's use this one. This one's only got a tiny bit of pink on it. I just feel like I need. dark around here just to give it I like up here a lot but there's not enough variation throughout so I feel like I need to add some just give it something a different flavor We can blend this out in a second with some alcohol. Yeah, I definitely think it needed that. So let me grab a clean one with some alcohol. We'll blend that together. And then uh, I think it'll be good to bake. So, you know, just sit here and play. It's just like painting, really. So enjoy it. Don't rush the process. I mean, if you're not enjoying it, then why are you even doing it, is my thought. If you don't like crafting, what the hell are we even doing, right? If it makes you miserable, find another hobby. Definitely find another hobby. Because your hobby should make you happy, not upset. And... Stop putting pressure, so much pressure on yourself. It's not like, you know, there's no need. Sometimes things come out shitty. And I was going to show you my video of the ones I wasn't happy with. I was totally going to show you that video because I was going to call it, you know, an attempt. Is really, because it's not really a fail. I hate when people say they failed. It's not actually a fail, I don't believe. I think you attempted something and it wasn't what you imagined in your head it it was going to be but half the time when I don't like something other people do 
So it's never a failure, especially if you learned. As long as you've learned something, it's not a failure. Right? Because next time you'll do it differently. Every time I show you guys the steps and what I'm doing, every time it comes out a little bit better and a little bit better. What do you think all the creators on YouTube do? Most of them practice off camera. I don't tend to practice off camera, but I do it on camera. Um, but most of them p tend to practice. So, you know. Just let it go sometimes. Yeah, I think it needed that little different kind of flavor on the, in this area. Flavor. Okay. That's where I'm at. And we'll modify it. We have some other colors I'll use when I'm done. And I'll talk to you about those when I get there. Okay, so I finished baking it off last night, and this is what we have so far. And now I do want to clean it up a little bit if there's any color down in there. Um, we also want to clean up these ragged edges, and then we'll do a couple more things to it, and I'll show you. So first thing to, you know, it's like down in here, you see that's got a lot of pink down in it, and I want it to be white. What I'm going to use is my Dremel. Now, I have tons of bits for my Dremel, like tons of them. And... Um, some of them I put on the Amazon Ambassador page, um, but pretty much all you have to look up is drill bits, and there's different shapes. So ones like this with the like crosshatch design, these are carbide burrs, okay? And then there's also like diamond burrs. Now the diamonds do grind finder. The carbides can take more off, but they can also catch and send you in a direction you don't want to be in. So also one of the shanks that I have is a little too narrow. So if you ever get one, like, okay, let me show you. Now, some of these I ordered a couple years ago when I was doing mosaics to grind the glass. So this is the normal Dremel shank, and this is the skinnier one. This one doesn't hold in my Dremel. So what I do is just take one layer of masking tape and wrap it around, and that should hold it firmly in there for you so pretty much what I'm going to do is find the smallest ones I have and I have this one this is a carbide I also have this diamond okay that should be fun you could also probably take a nail striper and add some white paint down in there if you want it to be stark white like I do um, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do. So what I'm going to do is first, I'll, and I also have this pointed one I'm going to use. I'm going to start out with a round one. So this is a tiny little round ball on the tip there. Put it down in. And I'm going to move you to over my lap because it's easier for me to do this when I have more room. Yes, this is my old tattered blanket I use in the basement. So pretty much I'm just going to grind out any areas I feel like need to be grinded out. And when I tilt my Dremel down like this, it rattles. When I was doing mosaics, I was cutting little pieces, and one of them fell down in here, so it does rattle. So, But... Pretty much all I'm going to do... Now this is a diamond burr, so it's very fine. So it takes me a minute. This one might actually be too fat. Yep. I'm going to use my pointed one I have.
You see how that's much more whiter now? Much more white. I'm just going to go around and fix up any shapes I want to fix up. Because you can draw with this. It's not easy, but you can. Sorry, I was just looking at the camera. Seeing if you were seeing what I was seeing. I don't think I'd want to grind the whole design with this for sure, but you can fix up some areas. I think I might also want to do some of these dash marks, so I'll do that off camera. <clears throat> and then I'll be back and I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, so I got it all kind of trimmed up and everything how I want it. Let me just take a toothbrush and get all the dust out. And I was looking, I ripped off a piece from this broken one to see if I want to border this. And I think I do. I think the black to me makes it kind of pop with a thin border even though this is not a thin border right now because it's all chewed up so let's uh get some stuff out and we'll we'll border it so 
I'm going to show you how I prefer to do the borders. Let me grab a couple things and I'll show you. And actually, before we bordered it, I wanted to do something. So, yesterday I used, and I want to use a couple of these and see what they look like. So, these are the Alcohol Pearls by Ranger, and I wanted to just put some shimmer on top of some of this coloring. Now, just a light. I don't want to dye it. I also wanted to show you, if you take right now, because this has been baked for a half hour, right? And this is why I'm going to do this part now. If you take a Q-tip with some 99% alcohol, and you try to rub some of this off, it doesn't come off very easy. Now, with wear and tear with clothing, it will probably wear off over time. Yes. See? Like, I'm not getting anything off. So once it's baked, it's pretty well set, but if you're going to wear it as jewelry, because it's going to rub on things, it'll probably wear off. So you do want to kind of put something, some kind of sealer on it, but I want to get this on so it can be in the last bake so that way, um, it's, I don't know, it's just more embedded in there. So I'm going to use the same Q-tips I used yesterday or little things. And I just want to add like a shimmer layer without like using mica powders or anything. This has the mica built into the inks. But you have to shake them up really well. You see the mica down there? So this one's called Enchanted. This is the bright pink. I do have, they do have more colors. This is a set. And I think that came in this set. Trying to find the ones that came in the set. I know there's a red. Let me see that one. Right here. And I'll show you. So these aren't quite like the mixatives. I don't know, there might be another one or two. But I got the set, so there's two greens, Envy and Sublime. There's two blues that came in the set I got, Celestial and Tranquil. Um, there's these two pinks. Well, this is, yeah, this is pink. Um, Intrigue and Enchanted. Then there's this purple, Villainous. Then there's Smolder. Deception, which is like a definitely a red. Alchemy. And Splendor. And there might be another one or two. I don't know. I can't find it in my big box of inks. So, um, they just have mica in them. Pearl. And I was just going to add some of that. Just gets a little shimmer on it as well. So in the bright pink, I was going to do this one. Ooh, it just tinted my... It's actually from what was on it from yesterday. Just reactivated. So now that the base is set, so I actually do want to grab new ones. I was going to use the ones I used yesterday, but when I get these wet, it picks up the color that I was using yesterday. And I don't really want color, I just want a, a shimmer. I like the color I have. There we go. because I'm not really using a heavy amount of this. It's not really tinting or changing my colorage too much. I mean, it is pigmented, so it will if you put this on initially, but I did, I don't know, I just used the other ones and then I just want to tint with this. Might try to use some of this alchemy, this yellow. 
but you it really does take a lot of shaking to get the micas all down in there especially if you haven't used it in a while okay let me shake these up okay let's use some of the yellow And you don't need much of it just to get the mica in it. I was going to try the orange. I don't know if it's going to be too dark, but I've never tried it, so I wanted to try it. Put it right on this yellow one. Let's see. I can always wipe it off if it's too dark. Oh, that's actually not bad. So, I don't know, that that would be up to you if you have them and you want to use them or if, if they interest you. I love craft supplies, so I tend to, rather than spend my money on my coffees every morning or this and that, I tend to spend extra budgeted money on craft supplies <clears throat> because they last for a long time and you don't really ever have to, I mean, these will last me years. They don't take a lot of replacing I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of projects you use them on, of course. I mean, if you were going to use this on the, uh, why am I going to draw a blank, on the guppo paper, or whatever it's called, I can't even think of the name right now, you would probably go through more of it. But I did want to get this on before I do the final bake because once it goes in the oven for the last time, it's going to be pretty much on there. And I that's the way I want it to be. I want it to be pretty much on there. Just got some over on that blue, so I was just wiping it off. I might actually add some purple down there. I'm not the biggest fan of purple. My mom loves purple. My mother-in-law loves purple. I don't really like purple for some weird reason. You know why? I bet you. It just hit me. So my my sister and I are only 11 months apart, right? So we're Irish twins, they call it. And so you got the same Barbie dolls, the same everything when you were kids, right? She always got pink. I always got purple. She got the white Barbie. I got the black Barbie. And I don't mean that in a racist way at all. I, that just came out. Did you hear me pause after I said that? But that's so we could distinguish between whose was whose. She got the blonde Barbie. I got the brown haired Barbie. If they had a black and white Barbie, yes, we did get. But if, for some reason, because I have brown hair, I always got the purple things. And she has blonde hair. She always got the pretty pink things. Like, what the hell, Mom? I like pink. So anyways, we, uh, I wonder if that's why I don't like purple, because I always thought her, her stuff was prettier than my stuff, always.
always thought her stuff was prettier than mine. Her shirts that she got that was pink. I always liked the pink. And maybe it's because I was stuck with the purple. Maybe if she had gotten purple and I had always gotten pink, I would have liked the purple. I never thought of that. Maybe that's why. So I'm just adding some. So this will just give it more of a metallic sheen without having to use like mica powders. And once it's baked, it'll be more stuck. And last color, the Sublime. Yep, Sublime. And there's a darker green too if I wanted to. Use that. You could. Mm, no, never mind. I'll scratch what I was just going to say. Cool. Okay, so now that that's done. Let me put all these to the side. We're going to be using our extruder to make our border. Now, there's many different ways to border your pieces um, and do whatever way is most comfortable for you, but I prefer doing it this way. So, first things you're going to need, you're going to need, is some black conditioned black. You're also, let me pick these up. Hang on. Let's do those in my box. Okay. So, you're going to need some conditioned black clay. In a little ball here you're going to need your extruder and then you're going to need extruder tips or your dies or whatever you want to call it so i'm going to use the one circle die okay and i'm not going to get the bigger one so the best way you can use the dash mark dies but i find they're always too thick and i'll show you that in a second hang on there's that one i have one more dash mark but where is it right there Okay. So what you're looking for is the thickness of your pendant. And depending on your thickness of your pendant, it's going to depend on which one you use. Okay. So like if we use these dash marks, obviously my pendant, that's way too thick. If I have a pendant that thick, this would work from there to there, but I don't. There's this dash mark, and again, still too big, so I tend not to use the dashes. I tend to use the circles, and of course, the big circles are too big, so get rid of those. Now we have, and obviously this little one's too little, so we have a choice between these two. Now if I put this one up, if I kind of line it up with the edge, you're going to see it's a little big, and this one's probably slightly small. So I'm going to use a slightly smaller one because we're going to stick it through the extruder. But it's only slightly smaller. Or um, we're going to put it in the pasta machine. So let me get. It. So I have two extruders. I have one for my dark clay and I have one for light clay. And the one for my dark clay that I'm going to be using right now is super squeaky and stiff. Um, because I decided to be off a tutorial take it apart and watch how to clean it out and to make it work better and for me it did not make it work better to take it apart so if yours works well don't take it apart because mine works fine I thought that's I saw a YouTube video someone said how to clean your extruder and take it apart and oil it and blah 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 and I was like oh maybe I should do that yeah no was not necessary okay so get a piece out as long as you think you'll need or as at least long enough to wrap around your pendant, right? Too much excess and it makes it harder to work with. So then we're going to run this through our pasta machine to flatten it out on a setting, whatever setting you want. And that will depend on how thick you want your border. So I think yesterday on the border that my dog chewed up, it was a setting four. And I think I want to go slightly smaller. I'll take it down to a five. The problem is, is you still want to be able to work with it. You don't want it so thin that you can't manipulate it. If you don't want a visible border, either don't put one on or just paint your sides with acrylic paint. Some people do the smear thing. Um, that I can do, but it takes forever. So I would rather do a visible border like this. 
on certain pendants. And I do want this visible because I think it'll make it all pop, that contrast. So let me run it through quick. So this is on a setting five. Yep, I think that will be good. Okay, so we're gonna need some bacon bond. I usually just put it out on my table and then do it with my fingers. You just want a tiny little bit, just enough to make it sticky, but not enough to make it like slide all over. But you do want some on there because your clay is baked. You do not want it to be, you don't want nothing. It's like a glue between baked clay and raw clay. You definitely want something whether it's liquid clay or bacon bond, but bacon bond is meant to hold two pieces of clay together. So if you have it, use it. Okay, I'm gonna cut the end just so it's flush. And I also am gonna wipe up this so I don't stick it my clay in it. Okay, and then we're just gonna begin wrapping it around pretty much. And what's nice about using a border like this any, I'm gonna zoom out, hang on. Any of these areas on the side where we've gouged into it, when I resin, this will help hold the resin on and not let it flow off those areas. So borders are helpful that way if you think you're, if you're not great at resining, if you always get overflow on the side. If you add a border like this, sitting up just a little bit from the top edge, it'll give you something to put the resin into. So what I mean sitting up from the top edge is literally sitting up a little bit. And I am going to have it sitting up just slightly on the front side. Now this is hard to do on camera because usually I'd be flipping it around all different kinds of ways and being able to see what I'm doing. But i got to stay in the camera view. So I'm trying to make it kind of even but sitting up a little bit. And that way it does hold my resin. Pretty much just follow it around. Now when I've done this on pendants where the front of the pendant is flat, I don't usually have it sitting up unless, like I said, I need it to hold the resin on. Because it's going to want to flow out any of these carved areas that go off the edge. The resin is going to want to flow out of those. So, and also the front of the pendant is not super flat so taking your blade and carving it off isn't going to be easy because it's rough and bump pretty much okay so I just got to do this side but I'm going to do it off camera because it's I need to hold okay and then Oh, and as far as the crackling technique, that's how crackly when I run it through, that's how crackly any of my clay gets. I, this crackle technique, man, I have tried it running it through a circle extruder and then through my pasta machine. I've tried um, using that dash extruder. I've tried all kinds of different things. That's as much as my clay ever crackles doing that crackle technique. I know I've talked to it. Like, why do I struggle with it? I have no freaking clue why my clay won't crackle. I've tried leaching clay. I've tried using really soft clay. It just, I cannot do that edge crackle thing. It just doesn't work for me. I'm just trying to smooth off the seam there. And this is going to be a pendant that we don't sand because if we sand it, we'll take off our alcohol ink. So I'm just going to kind of bevel over this back side just so it's mushed onto my clay.
smooth it off with your finger. I can't use my fingertips, they're too dry, so I have to use a lower part of my finger, but even then sometimes. Especially if it's a weekday and I'm using the medical grade soap all day long, the hospital grade soap. Okay, and then I'll shave off any excess on the back. And it's hard because you've got to have to hold it on the front side gently so you're not squishing anything. And you could back this in black, but I don't really care if it's backed more than this. I think I might have taken it with my finger and kind of folded it over. So I'm just going to stand it back up by here. is ready to go in for the final final bake now my final bake always goes for an hour which means this clay down in the middle the one with the alcohol ink will total have an hour because we've already baked it for a half hour it will have an hour and a half whereas the black clay will have a total of an hour you want your whatever clay to at least go in for an hour for strength okay so i don't care if another piece is in there for three hours as long as the last clay that goes on your pendant has an hour it just makes it stronger it always is i mean you can do the 30 minutes but um you're better off going a little longer than shorter on time so i'm going to bake this totally for an hour that way the black has been in there and it's a good strong border um, and when it's done, pretty much I'll just buff the outside with my orange and white wheels and then we'll resin it and see, see how it, it comes out. You know, you could carve roses, you could do whatever you want with this, but maybe it'll get you guys thinking about things you could do. I don't know, something I wanted to try. I don't think it's horrible. It's definitely different. You know, if I wanted perfect flowers, I'd just make some canes, but this is different for sure. Okay, let me get it in and we'll see what it looks like after it's resined. Okay, so it's all done. It's all resined and I got the edges buffed up and I just used my orange and white wheel. I did the back a little bit too, but nothing major. Um, and I resined it to the level, as you can see, and you could dome it higher if you want to, just add an more layers on um, I did try using my UV light that I have for my nails and for like for like UV gel polish um, now that is a higher wattage than my tiny Pandora light and it will cure the resin quicker but it did cause more bowing so then I put another layer of resin and put it back in my tiny Pandora light to kind of even that off because it did, it distorted the pendant more curing it quicker than it does in the tiny Pandora light um, that cures it a little slower. So the tiny Pandora light, what I like about it, and if you're in the U.S. and you can get it, even though it's more expensive, she made it for polymer clay. She worked, you know. It's uh, Teresa Pandora Salgado. I mean, she works with polymer clay. She makes amazing canes. She knows what we're looking for. Um, what we're looking for in resin and what we want the resin to do to cure. So that's why I liked her light to begin with, especially when I was new and didn't know much about resin. I really never used it until I started with polymer clay. I was like, okay, let me get this from someone who knows, one, what the watts are, and two, like, I don't know. I just felt like it was the better light to go with. So 
I had never tried it in my nail light that I showed you guys a while back. It's a Luxe Up nail light. Um, and I think the watts are like double, double what um, the tiny Pandora light is. So it cures it. And when it cures it to get it to dome, it pulls all the resin from the outside to the inside. So because it cured it so quick, the Penda went and bowed more. So I put another layer on and put it in my regular light. It is bowed just a hair. But on your clothing, you're not going to see that. Yes, on a flat board, you might see it. But when you're wearing it, you don't notice it. Okay, so again, that's your call if you want to use a slower curing light so you do, or slower curing resin so you never get that. I did use the two to four minute resin, which the quicker curing resins, you usually always get some distortion of the pendant. But I got a lot when I put the two to four minute curing resin in my UV nail light if that, any of that makes sense. And again, like I've said before, the two to four minute resins, I usually cure for 30 minutes. And the 30 minute resins, I usually cure for um, an hour. Just like the clay says to be baked for 30 minutes, but I still bake it for an hour. So now that that's all done, and this is what I have, and it's definitely different than anything I've made, and I kind of like that. We're going to drill our hole, and I've gone through it in a lot of detail and shown you this pin drill, talked about it, stuff like that, and especially in my beginning more videos, I really, it's hard to repeat yourself every time, so definitely go back to, you know, pendant number one. I think this will be pendant number 28, you know, and then canes in there too. I have the canes all numbered separately, cane one, cane two, cane three, pendant one, pendant two. Uh, polymer clay ornament one. So go back to, you know, cane one, pendant one, because I'll, I'll say things in there that I don't repeat every single time because it becomes very repetitive as the person making it. So I'm going to try to find my center and, you know, you can always put a permanent marker dot on it and then wipe it off after if you're not like, just take a permanent marker if you're not sure where your center is. And go, okay, so I think my center is somewhere around there. Nope, it needs to be over just a hair more. Maybe there, and then you can really look at it, and you can just wipe it off with some alcohol. That looks about good. The other thing is, how close to the edge do you drill? Well, everybody has a different preference. I try to get it as close to the edge as possible. So what I'll do, and usually I do this down on the table, I put my drill there and I kind of push a little bit and make a little tiny tick mark into it and then just drill. Now most of the resins and clays, clay drills through really easy, most of the resins drill through fairly easy too except for the other day I used the Lisa Pavelka one and that one drilled through quite hard actually, I was quite surprised. I can feel it coming through, so I'm going to move my finger away. Because you can see it starting to come through. Don't let this metal part touch your res resin, because if you go all the way in, you can actually leave a mark. Like if I do it on just the clay, do you see the circle it just left? You can actually score your resin. So always just go close, but don't get that metal part, that hub right there up against it. I always start from my smallest size, I've said this before, up to my largest to prevent cracking. And I don't know if I'm going to use a black or a gunmetal or, um, not black, gunmetal or Am I going to use silver? I'm not really quite sure what I want to do, so I'm going to have to set it next to it. Take a peek. And a lot of my uh, bales and stuff I get off of Etsy. <clears throat> My jump rings I got off of Amazon. I think I put those on my ambassador page. Okay. Let's 
I'm going to have fingerprints all over that. Yep, so let's wipe that off with some alcohol quickly and that permanent marker. Just some. This is the regular isopropyl alcohol that you buy for like wound care and stuff. Just I don't like to use the 99% on the resin on my last layer because I find it dulls the finish of the resin a little bit or on some resins. So let's see what color we're going to go with. Now do I want to go with silver? I don't think I want to go with a big one. No, probably just a little one. I try to just use little ones. Oh, I do have these big ones. No. Or do I want to go with a gunmetal tone? gold. Gold won't go with it. I have like this rose gold. I've just searched on Etsy for bales. There's all different kinds and colors you can get. This one I got from, you know, these three I got from the same person on Etsy, obviously, because they're the same exact bale in three different tones. Um, so either the black or silver. Now I do have these round ones. I could use one of these little round ones, or I have one of these. Gives it a little bit of silver and black. I don't like that one. This one is too shiny. <laughs> I have these, but I've used them all, and I just ordered some more off of Etsy. These are more a little more matte and I really end up I really like these but I don't see myself wearing this pendant tons so I don't want to use my last one like I said it's a little more matte it's a cute pendant it's just I'm in the middle of winter right now so it doesn't really go I think I'm going to use this round one I just kind of like the roundness of it against the shape of that For some reason, the round is drawing my eye. I have different ones. I think I got these on Amazon. They, this one's like a butterfly. This one has like a flower, a daisy on it. This is a different type of butterfly. And then there's these ones with just some lines, like geometric lines. I think I might use that butterfly one. Let's do that. So I think a six millimeter bale will be, or um, jump ring will be wide enough to fit in this. So it's really, well, maybe not. It's really what you're, when you're sticking your jump ring through, sometimes it'll catch your pendant. So we'll see. I'm gonna use my bent nose beetle on pliers. These are my favorite pliers. I got a couple different ones because I liked the the uh, feel of it in my hand. They have really skinny handles and they don't take much and they bounce right back compared to other ones that when they're fully open they're really wide like like this and I feel like I'm these fully open aren't super wide. So again bend forward to backwards, twist front to back. Let's try putting it through and see if it will go through or if it's gonna catch the underside, we'll see. So see how when it's coming through, it's slightly catching under there. Oh, see it went through fine. If it was gonna catch up in there, then you'd go to a, a wider. So instead of a six millimeter, you would do a seven. If the seven didn't fit, you'd go to an eight. And then grab it as much as you can which having two players really makes this easier. Take a peek at it. Sometimes one side's up higher than the other, so then I'll just pinch it down a little bit. You know, when they're mass producing these, they can't always make them perfect.
Boom. Okay. Do one final wipe of this guy. With this old rag I've been using over and over. Maybe it needs a little more alcohol. Let me grab my stand and I'll show it to you. Okay, there it is, fully finished. It's a cute little piece there. Definitely different. Like I said, if we wanted um, perfect flowers, we'd just make canes, you know? Well, that's not what I was going for in this. Definitely more of a carved, you know, you could carve roses into a metallic background. You could do all kinds of things with this. So, you know, hopefully it gets you kind of your mind going and gets you kind of thinking about things you can do. Actually, that's an air bubble down in there, isn't it? Yep, I didn't even notice that. Um, so anyways, I hope this inspires you to do something like that, especially if you have a stamp carver or a linoleum carver at home to make your own stamps. I know a lot of us crafters probably do. So, and it's not very expensive to buy a stamp carver either. It's a pretty fun thing to work on, honestly, carving stamps. It's pretty neat. So, I'll see you guys next time. Later.